century America, where we are still facing the same issues in our political and social world that we did in the 1900s. I am concerned, just plain concerned, not about the fact that our planet is dramatically warming, not about the fact that despite modern medicine and vaccines, we are still in the midst of a three-year pandemic, not even about the fact that we are marching our way to a third world war. No, no, I am far more concerned about the fact that just a few years ago, a study found that 30% of the US population did not know the name of the Vice President of the United States. Now, if a third of us do not know who we put into office, how can we confidently claim that we are electing the best candidates to lead our country? Unfortunately, this is the state of our political landscape. A population who is unaware about our policies and politicians, and the politicians and the government officials who take advantage of that. We can argue on and on all day about what created such an issue, but it is time for us, citizens of what we claim to be the greatest country in the world, to start accepting our responsibility and start picking up the pieces of this mess. We live in a world where we can no longer keep pointing fingers at the Democrats, Republicans, Independents, or even people who don't even know what a political party is. Now you must be wondering, well, Rhea, get to the point. What's the issue here? The issue here is simple. Uneducated voters have taken over our political landscape, rendering it uncredible. Now, what is an uneducated voter? An uneducated voter is someone who creates opinions or casts a ballot without knowledge of the full context of a political issue or is unaware of how our political system works. Because of this, we can no longer confidently claim that we're electing the best candidates who are gonna make our nation a better place. If anything, I would say this is the true crisis facing our society. Now, there are various reasons as to why we are stuck in this loop of blindly voting in elections. However, I have narrowed it down to three crucial factors as to why we have, are in such a reality. The media, negligence by citizens, and stereotypical political roles. The media has played a commendable role in bringing the truth to viewers. However, oftentimes it is only half of the truth, leaving the other half hidden from the viewers. The same news can vary from network to network. Here, let me give you a completely untrue and random example. Let's take Channel X, a predominantly liberal network who's claiming that the Republican Party is supporting taking over Mexico. On the other hand, we have Channel Y, a predominantly conservative network, who says that the Republican Party simply wants to aid Mexico with internal affairs. Who's telling the truth? The answer is neither. And sadly, the viewers who are stuck in this bias-filled, TRP-concerned nonsense will rarely take the time to research what they saw on their screen. And this issue has become 10 times worse because we are now getting our news from way more platforms and outlets than we did a decade ago. Which brings me to my second point, negligence by citizens. I mentioned earlier that we are constantly being flooded with bias-filled information. However, very little of those times we are going to take the time to research what we saw on our screen. Citizens are neglecting their civil duty of educating themselves before making a political opinion and often cast a ballot before we are even aware of what the issue is. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to an opinion. But there is a difference between a supported and an unsupported opinion. Unfortunately, citizens are neglecting this aspect of civil responsibility by continuing to make political claims without knowing the backstory of such allegations. Lastly, 
Stereotypical political views. Stereotypical political views force younger generations to follow their predecessors' views. Certain races, religions, and genders tend to sway towards a certain political party. For example, 78% of people who consider themselves white and evangelical tend to sway towards the Republican Party. Now, you may not see the issue with a certain group of people swaying towards a certain party. However, when Yale conducted a study, they only found that 3.5% of US voters would vote against a preferred candidate as punishment for undemocratic behavior. Now, that is more than 96% of our voters ignoring a candidate's unconstitutional behavior just to achieve party goals. We are seeing people blindly vote in elections regardless of the candidate's promises and the depths of their actions. Now you see how detrimental stereotypical political roles can be in a changing world. These stereotypes hold our new voters back from creating their own new informed opinions that can be influential in evolving our nation. So how do these uneducated voters actually affect us? Well, just like any investment, one must be informed. If not, the investment is pointless and at times detrimental. Your vote is your investment in this country. And it only makes sense for it to be an informed investment. People who blindly vote in elections are resulting in us electing unworthy candidates who are actually hindering the development of our communities. We often complain about politicians but don't realize that we put them there. Instead of electing candidates with the most controversy or have been in the political realm for longest, we could be electing candidates who are new, fresh with ideas, and ready to evolve our nation. Now, enough about getting to know our po politicians. There are still many people who are unaware of how our political system works. According to the Annenberg Constitution Day Civic Survey, only 39% of responders were able to name all three branches of our government. Constituents need to know their rights and their political system in order to be effective voters. Uneducated voters can range from people who don't understand our government to people who are unaware about politicians and the platforms that they're running on. Either way, this is an issue that needs to be rectified immediately as it hinders the potential as to which our communities can improve. Now, you must be wondering, what can we do about this? Well, there are many solutions, and the change starts with us, the youth, the future voters, and hopefully soon, the future leaders of our country. The reason why I single out younger generations is because we are the ones who are about to hit the polls. We are the ones who are going to be deciding our leaders for the next 60 years. I don't know if we can depolarize our political system, but I do know that we can make it better by putting in more thought before we cast our ballot. We can start by making small changes, like getting a glimpse of government through local politics or investing ourselves in our communities. Schools can also play a crucial role by developing kids civically through hands-on teaching of government and encouraging kids to follow politics. This can range from programs, clubs, or even effective curriculum. In addition to developing ourselves civically, we must start looking at every piece of news with depth and go beyond the cover. We as teenagers often base our opinions on clips that we see on Instagram. Just remember that those clips have just as much credibility as a BuzzFeed quiz telling you the fruit that you're most like is a pineapple. <laughs> We can start by looking at more nonpartisan news sources, such as routers or the conversation. This ensures that the information that's being provided to you has the pure intention of educating you and not swaying you towards their side. Using this information, you can then craft your very own opinion. 
Also, whenever you're looking at media sources, make sure to check the credibility, as many, many media outlets have the prime goal of making money or convincing you of their agenda. Research topics. Read more articles. <laughs> Dig deeper than what's on the cover. That's how we have the power to lead effective change, not only in our political system, but also in our nation. Information is power. Let's educate ourselves. Let's become better citizens for us and for our posterity. Sincerely, a concerned citizen. Thank you.